Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. My constituency of Upper Ban is home to many veterans. Their service to our nation is valued by me as their MP and the overwhelming majority of the local community. For their service, we owe them a great debt of gratitude, and central to that gratitude is the full implementation of the military covenant right across the United Kingdom, something for which we in Northern Ireland still have a way to go. At the core of that covenant, that, that promise between society and our military family is the principle of fairness. And I believe what we have before the House in the Overseas Operation Bill is no different. At the heart of this should be fairness. Is it fair that our military personnel are targeted through vexatious actions that are proven to have no legitimacy when they reach a court, but in the period up to that point comes at a mental and financial cost that, can heavy burden, that is a heavy burden to bear? And likewise, would it be fair that those who have committed wrongdoings can escape justice? Would that be fair in victims? Absolutely not. I am conscious of the concerns raised both by honourable members in this House and by constituents that this bill could exempt soldiers from justice of heinous acts such as torture. No one wants that. At all times, the punishment, whether the alleged offence is within a five-year period or not, must fit the crime. There should be no amnesty for those who abuse the uniform when serving crime and country. Mr. Speaker, one area, Mr. Deputy Speaker, one area that still remains unresolved through this bill, and despite promise and platitude from the government, is the vexatious prosecution of those who served in Northern Ireland. These veterans must not be left behind. Would the member give way? I will. I thank the member for giving way, and in doing so, there are still, still many so soldiers or veterans who are waiting the knock on the door, and it has been mentioned, 80-year-old men are receiving the knock on the door. When and when the Minister is summing up in relation to the wind-up of this, this debate, will he give assurances, and in relation to the progress of the implementation and the forward movement of inclusion within the Northern Ireland Bill? I thank my member, and I, I agree entirely with uh, his sentiments. On the 18th of March, in a statement to this House, the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland did give a commitment that, th that there would be equal treatment for Northern Ireland veterans. But yet today, we have no sign of a bill that will give that equal treatment to the veterans who serve in the streets and laneways of Ulster. Such delays create suspicion. Mr. Deputy Speaker, so I urge the Minister to commit that before this bill becomes law, veterans in Northern Ireland will have that equal treatment. On, on that point? Uh, I'll give way quickly, yes. I think I'll the, the Minister who will be replying to sorry, the. I know you're. you're I can't do it from the track. Apologies. Sorry, my, my, I just realised that. My, my, would they all to give way? I will quickly. I need to keep moving. Okay. I'm, I'm... And you'll find out how this plays well. Yeah. It's always a learning curve, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I'm still learning. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I thank the other lady for giving way, and, and very clearly on the issue of of of, um, of making sure they are veterans in Northern Ireland, which, which I declare into as, as one of those veterans, by the way, having served in the Ulster Defence Regiment in Northern Ireland. The Minister gave a commitment earlier on that by the end of this year, uh, that the, the veterans' issues for Northern Ireland would, would there would be a bill coming through. Those that really, like me want to see the Minister committing himself to that in the, his conclusion at the end of this debate, that the veterans in Northern Ireland will have the same protection as those here in the mainland. I thank the Honourable Member uh, for his intervention. I absolutely, thank wholeheartedly you. agree with him, and I think he will have, the Minister will have got the message loud and clear from the Ulster benches that we want that clarity today. Those who served in Operation Banner, who stood firm against terrorism and defeated those terrorists, must not be left behind as prey for unscrupulous lawyers emboldened by smears and innuendo from self styled rights activists, Republican politicians, or investigative journalists. To do so would be wrong. In Northern Ireland, we have the ludicrous scenario where terrorists were freed from prison only having served 18 months for the murder of police officers and soldiers. Yet we are here having to debate why we do not pursue elderly men who have served their country standing against those very terrorists. Mm -hmm. These same terrorists now want to be paid compensation for injuries they suffered carrying out their illegal and murderous deeds. 
Mr Deputy Speaker, I want to put a marker down in relation to this bill. There can be no consideration and no legal framework to offer a level of equivalence between the perpetrator and the innocent victim. In conclusion, this is a matter of fairness. Fairness to our servicemen and women, fairness to victims, the fair application of the law of this land, but also fairness within the ranks of service personnel. Northern Ireland veterans must be treated fairly, and in that regard, this government must step up, live up to their prior commitment. No more lip service, no more delay. Yeah.